Hey everybody, welcome to Live Coding with Jesse. I'm Jesse, and today we're gonna gonna uh, fix some some things that broke uh, on this this main uh, project, Project Five that we've been working on. Uh, so a lot of things broke whenever I updated to the latest version of Material UI. So it's uh, version 1.2.0. Uh, so at first I had thought about just holding off on updating because we were so close to launch and then we ended up not launching whenever I, I wanted to. So I based on uh, some advice from I believe it was Christian that had suggested not to get too far behind which I think is good advice uh, I decided to go ahead with the update uh, I figure it's better to be on a stable release version before we go live anyway um, and since we have a little bit more time now before we launch we may as well get it over with now So that's what we're going to be working on. Uh, I'm going to say what's up to everybody in the live chat here before we get started. We may only end up doing like one Pomodoro session. I'm going to see. I'll, I'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, Nikki noticed the uh, Hacktoberfest t-shirt. So this is the... If you participate in Hacktoberfest, which is... Uh, it's an event where I, I believe you have to make three uh, contributions to open source projects. So if you make three contributions in the month of October, then you get this shirt and uh, some stickers. Yeah, I think we got... St yeah, we definitely got uh, a sticker. So that was fun. So if you didn't get to do it this past year, definitely uh, look out for that um, in, in October. I assume it's going to happen again. Right. Okay, uh, Siberian says, what's the too long didn't watch of the new updates? <laughs> um, well, the one new component they have that I'm really excited about is a swipeable drawer. Uh, so that when you're on your phone, you can swipe the drawer like in and out, uh, which which I've wanted uh, for a long time for this project. So that's really cool. Uh, and I do want to transition over to that drawer, but not until after we fix all the things that are broken right now. Uh, but basically like the name of the package, I'll, I'll go through it in a minute. When I start my Pomodoro session, first I'll go through some of the biggest changes that I've already dealt with today. Uh, and then we'll just continue on with, with what I left off. Uh, but that should give you an idea of the new updates as well. Uh, Joey says, I was just fixing my own Material UI project when I got the notification for this video. Great timing. Oh, awesome. I'm, I'm glad. Well, maybe, maybe it'll um, help you out a bit. All right, so Brayhart says, say my name. So there you are. <laughs> uh, let's see. The beginning says, I don't know programming. That's cool. Uh, you're welcome to watch and ask questions. Uh, Brayhart also asks, uh, are you in Germany? No, I'm not in Germany. I'm in the United States. Okay. All right, let's uh, let's get started. I'm gonna start my Pomodoro timer. So for about 25 minutes, I'm gonna, you know, maybe I'm not gonna look at the live chat too much. But then after that 25 minutes, I'll come back and answer uh, as many questions as I can in the chat. Let me switch over. Okay, I'll make this a bit bigger so y'all can see the font, and then I'll start to go over. What we've done, I just noticed Bray Brayhard says, never watched a free code camp live stream, so show me what you got. <laughs> yeah, so if you've never watched one before, here's the deal with my live streams. I mess up a lot 
live and then I try to fix it so if that's if that is the heart of this live stream you will definitely find it today because I have messed up a very important part of my project uh, mainly what I'm working on right now is that side drawer that main menu that's on every single page doesn't work uh, it will I click it the state actually changes and reacts so the state changes uh, from true to false for whether or not it's open uh, that works but there's two things that seem to have changed with the new version one on the uh, the container itself for uh, that side drawer there's a some CSS added that makes sets it to visibility hidden and then on the body of the page it sets it to um, overflow hidden those things don't go away so when I click to open the visibility hidden doesn't change so it stays hidden and when I click to close the overflow um, for the body stays hidden as well so you can't scroll so I don't know why those issues are affecting it I've been through my markup to try to see and it's exactly the same as what's in the demos on the site so it's uh, it's a little frustrating but first let me show you some of what what I've already fixed and what's already been changed um, Joey asked what version I was upgrading from I was at beta 38 so we're going from beta 38 <laughs> we're skipping quite a few versions here to get up to the latest one okay so you can see here our dependencies now say uh, you know at material UI uh, core at material UI icons so before we didn't have this at symbol right we, we didn't have the core there either so the name of the package changed so if you're gonna upgrade you're gonna want to remove the previous packages and then add these packages like as they're named here okay, so that's a huge difference <laughs> you know, completely different packages uh, you can't just update the existing ones all right they there is this uh, code mod package that came through that's supposed to help update everything but I couldn't get it to work I followed the instructions I don't know what the problem is you can see some of the remnants of me attempting this in the terminal here um, so what I did was I manually went through because a lot of since the package changed the way we import things changes as well so we import things from at material UI slash core so I went through and just did a find and replace for all those and then also the icons have changed as well so it's at material UI icons so I went through a control find to replace all those. Not only that, but there were a lot of times where you could lump together a bunch of things. So like I could do list, list item, and list icon all together in one import, right? I'd just use brackets and bring it all in. And I'd import it all from list. Well, you can't do that anymore. Now you have to import them separately. So you import list item from list item, list item icon from list item icon, right? And that happened in quite a few places. So that script was supposed to help so that I wouldn't have to do that. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to work. So what I did was, um, with the help of the errors I was getting uh, in my terminal, I went through and found the places where I had to replace those things. And I checked the material UI documentation oh, for the right uh, for the right way to do that so those changes were kind of boring anyway so I'm I think it's it's okay that we didn't do it on the stream because it was just a lot of copy and pasting reading error messages and then going to the right file so if you do want to do it again um, I recommend trying to get that script to work if you can't though 
Uh, the best thing is just trace where it's telling you. It'll tell you the file where the error is happening in the line. You scroll down, you figure out what component was on that line, and then you scroll up and uh, change based on the documentation. You you change the import, and that that pretty much solved all those errors. So not getting these errors anymore, but still not everything's working. So let's let's look around some more. Let's uh, let's try to fix this. Let me pull over on this screen. Uh, I don't think I need these. So we'll get rid of that. Save some. Save some RAM. Uh, but I'm gonna pull over on the screen. The drawer just to show you what's going on. So there was one issue as well on these pages, uh, but that's was unrelated to the update so I I did fix that so I want to go to oops see it's doing that weird overflow hidden thing it's also doing this so this is not supposed to be an oval behind here so there there is some weird things happening also uh, there was a change with the way the grid works uh, the grid items automatically had some spacing between them but now that's all set to zero, so you have to manually put in spacing. So we'll have to go in here and put in spacing between these buttons now. Okay. The site is not normally really slow like this. It's just because I'm running the stream. Alright, so you can see we click that and it opens. Here's why it opens. Uh, in the drawer, I have manually I manually added visibility visible in line so it overrides what was happening before. All right. I'd rather not manually override what's supposed to be happening. But if that's how I have to fix this, that's that's how I'll fix it. Um, what I'm tempted to do, since I'm trying to figure out what's happening anyway, is uh, implement that that drawer, um, the swipeable drawer. Implement that now, and see if implementing that will solve any of our issues. So I think that's probably a, a good thing to work on right now. Okay, so let's bring over, let me bring over the documentation for Material UI as well so we can all check it out together. There we are. And that's just materialui.com. I'll, I'll paste it in so you can go exactly to where I'm at. So, there's this swipeable drawer. So, we're going to check out the code first and see if there are any um, major changes. On close, on open. All right, that's interesting. We have this uh, on close and on open. I don't believe we needed that with the regular drawer. But let's double check. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, definitely different.
Okay. Uh, looks like there are some issues with low end phones. So uh, we'll just we'll have to be careful of that. We'll have to just test that. Um, but otherwise, you know, I, I think we can we can use it, and we'll make sure that we we add these in here uh, that are going to test. Let me zoom in a bit. Uh, we'll add some of these in to make sure that we test for uh, whether or not we're on iOS or not. Okay, so first things first, let's get the import in here. So we're going to import swipeable drawer. Yeah, let me uh, move some things around here so that we can have more more room. There we go. So we're going to replace drawer with swipeable drawer. Oops. There we go. And then we'll go down here where we have drawer. And replace that with swipeable drawer. And let's make sure down the bottom we also replace this drawer. There we go. All right, so I'm going to save that and see if that even works at all. Unexpected token. Expected. Where is that? That's weird. How did that happen? Why did we get... Uh... Oh, now I remember. We, um... <laughs> we, uh installed a package that alphabetizes our imports or something. It organizes them somehow. Somehow it messed things up. All right. Let's go back here and just see what's going on now with our code. I'm going to refresh to get rid of anything I had done over here. Okay. Um, so that's, it's still opening, which was expected because of the, the little override that I did. But we see the overflow hidden is not, let me make that bigger. So the overflow hidden is still there. So whatever's causing that is still, still in play. Okay. Um, I guess we could try Let's see what we have currently. So on close. You know what we could do? Since we have that uh, on open on close, we could try to uh, do the switch in the CSS with those. It's like, I don't really want to do it like that, but I just, I'm just not sure where the, the problem is. All right, so let's see what's going on in these so on open on close it is calling toggle drawer and let's see what 
toggle drawer is doing. All right, wow, so toggle drawer is really, it's, it's just changing the state. Yeah, so nothing in there uh, is doing anything with those classes. All right, well, what we can do at least is uh, within our style uh, object, let's see, um, how are we going to do this? All right, let's just make this a, I can't remember how I've done this in line before, uh, so let's try it like this. Let's make this a template literal. Like this so template literal syntax allows us to just put in um, JavaScript right in the middle of strings uh, we can also do things like have um, line breaks and things uh, so it's pretty useful but for this case what I want to do is say um, open And um, I guess we do. Oops, now I don't want it. Actually, I don't want it like that. I wanted to say uh, we're going to do a ternary in here. So if it's open, we want it to be visible. If not, we want it to be hidden. So we want that value to change and you know what I don't know I don't think I'll need that uh, yeah it is gonna make me do that huh okay let's try it with the template literal there may be a better way to do that but if this works uh, I'm gonna go with that so since everything's run slow, <laughs> I'm just going to let that go for a second, uh, and I'll explain this. So, um, this is a backtick character, um, so it's right below the escape key. Um, and when you do that backtick character, everything inside is treated as a string, unless you do a dollar sign and a curly bracket. And then anything in here until the end of the curly bracket, you treat just like normal JavaScript. Uh, so in this case, we're using a ternary, which is kind of like a shorthand for an if statement. So we're basically saying if open is true, then we want the value that's returned out of here to be visible. If it's not true, so this is the else, we want it to say hidden. So this should give us our visibility hidden or visible uh, just like the behavior that is supposed to happen, which I can't figure out why it's not happening. So we're just kind of adding it in ourselves. Uh, it's, it's a little override. Rather not have to do it like this, but if we can't find the real cause of the problem, this, this should uh, work for us. So let's check the page. And... All right, it popped out, and we can see 
Where's our element? There we go. So we have visibility visible, which is overriding that visibility hidden. Let me make it bigger. You probably can't see. There we go. Um, so this is our element that's that's popped out now. Visibility visible. It's overriding the hidden that's in there. Now when we click out of here, it should get rid of it. Yep, and it does. It, in reality, what happens is the entire element goes off the page. Uh, so we, we don't really need that, but for some reason in Material UI, it, it seems like that's the way they want it to work. Um, so that's what we're going to go with for right now. Okay. Next problem. In the body, we're getting this... Um, overflow hidden definitely don't want that I mean I don't, I don't want that let's let's try this out let's see what happens so we're getting overflow hidden right now let's get rid of it let's see okay that's why so we don't want this scroll to happen So to be honest, like it's a bit annoying to have that scroll happen, but to be honest with you, if we can't get rid of it and all we do is override this overflow hidden, I'm okay with this scroll happening. Uh, I think it's unexpected, but it's not it's not a bug, right? It's you know, I can't can you think of any drawback to this actually happening other than just that's not it's unexpected? because you know, otherwise I mean it would stay still so let's try this again you know otherwise I'm trying to scroll right now with my cursor on this side nothing happens this still works uh, I think I might be I might be okay with just overriding this one Now the trick is going to be, where do I override this? And what do I set it as? Uh, overflow. Should I just set it to, let's see what I need to set it to for this to work properly. Uh, so it should. Overflow initial. Uh, initial seems to work. Let's go with overflow initial. And I'm probably going to have to do it in, uh, in our global styles. Yeah, uh, let's, let's check our layout component because if there is any component that would give me access to everything, uh, it would definitely be the layout component. So I don't, let me get rid of a few of these. We could check. No, that's not going to do anything. Let's get rid of that for now. And get rid of a few things that probably not going to work with today. All right, we don't we're not worried about the index just yet. We may come back to there though if we have some time. And let's go here then and uh, we'll go to All right, my timer just is up. So uh, as soon as I make this change, I'm going to come back into the live chat and answer some questions. body there we go so we can actually put it right here in the body um, for document.js underscore document.js so let's throw that in there and 
so we're gonna end up saying style equals um, and we're gonna say I'm gonna copy that in uh, but we definitely will need to put something around there and then we need our double brackets wait is it not oh spacing and then let's try that out we may have to put important on there as well I don't like to use important if it if it's not absolutely necessary but it may be absolutely necessary I'm gonna give it a manual refresh to clear out what we've done in DevTools Um, at least we're getting a, a circular uh, kind of uh, shadow or whatever that is behind there. All right, so we're going to open that up. We're going to check out the body still has overflow initial, which is great. And it's actually not scrolling. Uh-oh. Oh no, it did. It changed to overflow hidden. Alright, so it, it did still change to overflow hidden. Hmm. Okay. I don't think putting important on there is going to change anything. So what we'll need to do then is add the important um, to the CSS. Uh, the reason being uh, the JavaScript is just totally removing what we had in there before. So it will remove the important. need to find a spot where actually you know what this is going to be a little bit weird to do it like this but let's try this out I have never attempted to do this but we already have this uh, in the head here so let's say style and let's put in body um, whoops still thinking JavaScript and then we're going to put that overflow initial in there. Uh, is it not going to let us do this? I don't think it's going to let us do this. I'm just going to try it though, but I don't think it's going to work since we're still in JSX land here. Yeah. Alright, how can we make this happen?
The problem is I don't have a um, I don't have a, a style sheet that works everywhere. That's like on every component. But you know what? I bet we can have one. All right. So let's check out. On this side, we're just going to open up another page. Uh, so let's check out the index page. And let's see. Right now, we're pulling in. Are we not pulling in any styles? Are we pulling in anything on layout? No, we really aren't. Okay. Um, there we go. There's our global styles. I knew I had global styles somewhere. All right, I can get rid of this then. It's good to know that I can't do that. I mean, it... If I'd have thought about it for a second, I guess that would have made sense. But sometimes it's faster just to um, just to try something. The feedback loop is just so quick uh, when you're developing locally like this uh, that it it almost it's it doesn't make sense to like overthink something. Just you know try it, see what happens, and then move on. Okay, so here we can put overflow initial. And we're also going to see if it'll let us add important. I'm not sure, but I hope it will. If it does, this might solve our problem. All right, didn't get an error. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so we're on body right now. Let's see what we've got. Yep, all right, it does say overflow initial important let's open this great all right check that out so it it goes to overflow hidden is added to the element but we're overriding it with that important tag so that definitely has its uses its legitimate uses uh, so this will now work we can close it that overflow hidden is going to remain but it doesn't really matter right because we're overriding that so this works. I would still love to know why I had to do this workaround and why it's not working as I want to, but this is kind of cool. We have this in here now, uh, and it's it's swipeable. Still need to test that out uh, on a phone, but I'm not going to do that on the stream because you all can't see my phone anyway, um, so that, that wouldn't be very fun uh, for anybody watching. Okay, cool. So I definitely went over my, my time on my Pomodoro timer. I'm going to scroll up to the top and just go down through the live chat and uh, answer any questions that you all have. Um, if, so if you have any question, put it in the chat there now. Uh, Sai, so S-A-I says, Hi, can you help me with a problem I'm facing? Uh, well, I'll, I will try. Uh, it says, I'm trying to add uh, asynchronous data in JavaScript. I'm trying to find the sum of asynchronous data, but I get sum is zero. Hmm. I'm not sure. Um, Sai, if you had a link to some code you were working on, it would be a lot easier for me to... I, I'm not saying that I definitely can figure it out, but it would be a lot easier for me to figure out that particular problem. I'm 
D Hunt says, uh, Brayheart channeling your inner Destiny's Child. So Brayheart had said earlier, "Say my name." That's the it's the name of a Destiny's Child song from the '90s. Uh, Say my name. So <laughs> I definitely get it, Dion. I'm pretty sure I could sing most of the songs off of that CD. I'm not going to subject you all to the, my singing, though, so don't worry. Uh, John Hansen says, the best l honest live streams around. Thank you. I... <laughs> I, I can do that. I may not be able to make anything, you know, that's out of my hands. I'll try my best, but what I can do is at least be honest uh, when I mess up. Uh, Shri says, did you change the font color from Visual Studio Code extension? Um, I don't think so. Siberian says, Jesse, under stress now because of you? Under stress, is it because I, what did, what did I do to stress you out? Matthew says, hey, hey Matthew, how's it going? Thanks for watching. Albert says, this is one of the longest projects I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm so ready for this to be launched. It's gone on much longer than I anticipated. Uh, Brayhart said, I cloned the project. Uh, anyone know how to launch it? Uh, no good info in the readme. Actually, I thought the readme for this project had instructions. Let me double check because... If it doesn't, it definitely should. So let's go to GitHub by Microsoft and check out the README for this. All right, so the README is just really basic. Um, the contributing has some more stuff going on, but yeah, actually, it's not. You just get the repo, um, yarn install or npm install. We are using yarn on the project, so if you have yarn, use yarn, uh, and then run the dev server with just dev, so npm dev or yarn dev. So it's really. Um, it, assuming that you have Node and NPM uh, installed on your machine already, and Git, then you know you should should be able to. Oh. Sorry, you should be able to just follow the instructions. I mean, potentially, if you had an older version of Node, it might not work. But I'm not. I'm not sure about it. Very hard says uh, Jesse, you the man. Thank you. <laughs> Turtle says he has no sleep. I think maybe you're talking about me yawning all the time. Uh, I did sleep last night. I'm not sure why I'm so tired. Uh, let's see. 
Nis Nisarg asks if anyone knows about CSS grids. Uh, should I learn CSS Flexbox or CSS Grid or both? Um, I would say it's it's good to learn both because you'll probably run into both, uh, and you can use them together. So I don't really know which one to learn first, but I plan on learning both. Uh, Chris says learn Grid first. Well, it says Chris also says CSS Grid uh, kind of has a steep learning curve. Dimitri uh, says, "Hey Jesse, how you doing? Not too bad. Not too bad. Thanks for asking. I um, actually had a good morning. So uh, some of you may have may remember me mentioning on the stream, or if you follow me on Instagram, that I've been trying to lose weight. So I've been exercising and dieting. So I officially hit my goal weight this morning of 175 pounds. So I lost 15 pounds." in the last, I don't know, month or so. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, so that's been cool. So how's everything going for you, Dimitri? Hopefully well. Uh, Einbishen says, is it necessary to use SSH keys for small DigitalOcean projects? Um, when you run something on DigitalOcean, uh, if you already have your keys set up, you just click a checkbox and it'll set up the keys for you, um, like when you're setting up the droplet. So it's, it's really not hard. Uh, it's not hard to do. So I would always use SSH. I don't think you have to. You could use, uh, like log in with a password. Uh, but assuming you've already set them up once, um, and all all it takes is just a click of a checkbox, then I'm I'm not sure why you wouldn't want to. Uh, Joey says, "Couldn't you test the swipe hole drawer with DevTools device toolbar?" Hmm. I didn't even think about that, but let's check it out. Oh, nice. It works. <laughs> let's see if it works for us. All right, let's click this first. Hmm. Looks like it might not be working. Ah, oh, but you know what? I did forget to put in some of that code. Let me go back here since I I totally forgot. System responsive. I was just checking out the other types of drawers quickly to see if they added any new types. Um, swipeable drawer Let's add this stuff in. Um. And actually, we don't have, I didn't make this constant yet, so let's do that.
Oh, uh, Jeff says, isn't it swipeable temporary drawer? Oh, uh, did I mess it up? No, I think it's uh, the name of it in the component is just swipeable. All right, let's check it out. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. All right, it seems like it works. Like once I open it once, then it works. Maybe it's just, you know, trying to do it on here that's it's kind of messing it up. So I'll I'll have to um try it on my phone later and see if it's different. But at least it's kind of working. So it's doing something different. Anyway, Joey, that was a good idea using the uh, dev tools uh, to test that. Um, Zishan says, any resources on how to create Node.js and React? I don't know how to combine them. Um, well, you, I mean, you almost always run react with node uh, I'm trying to get resources I mean usually for most of our projects we end up doing a custom server in node so you could check some of those uh, check out our server.js files for some ideas and and maybe some of the live streams um, otherwise, you know, things like now the documentation for Next.js, I believe, has a section on doing your own custom server, and that's, you know, any JavaScript stuff on the server side is, if, if it's not all Node, then it's almost all Node. So, um, off the top of my head, I, I don't really know a tutorial that would, you know, specifically look at that part of it uh, okay Nikki was asking what's what's 175 pounds in kilograms and it says uh, around 79 kilograms so it's John says 79.379 kilograms thank you for that I I always forget about the difference in um, you know, in, in measurement systems. So, apologies for that. But I now weigh, evidently, I weigh seventy nine point three seven nine kilograms. Uh, Ambition says, "Do you have any video on creating SSH?" I do not have a video on that, but that's a great idea for a video. So, um, I will put that on my list. Phoenix says, why no space between buttons? Uh, you know what? That was one of the things that that got changed when I upgraded. So that's there's going to be space between these. I just don't have them right now. Uh, so let me, let me check just quickly to see how many pixels of space there should be. Okay, so it's, it is these divs, these grid divs, and uh, it's going to end up being... <laughs> Hi, one of my kids is coming in. Hi, Cordelia. Come here. You want to be on YouTube? Here, put your head down. She's trying to, like, climb back through all kind of stuff to get to me. Hey. All right. Come here. I'll be on YouTube. You say hi. Say hi. <laughs> All 
All right, actually, I'll, I'll work on this later. Basically, what I need to do is just, um, uh, there's a spacing prop on the grid items, and I just need to put in a value for spacing. So um, I'm, I'm going to switch over to my other screen and see if Cordelia will realize that she's on there. Look, are you on YouTube? Who is that? That's. Yeah? Can you say hello? Say hi. Can you say YouTube? No? <laughs> Who is that? Is that Dada on the screen? Yeah. Yeah. Ask out. Yeah? You want to listen? Do you help Dada on the computer? Sure. Yeah? Alright. Oh, you pressing the buttons? Okay. Look, there's lots of people that are talking to us on there. See him typing all these words? Help. Help. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And why? There we go. My computer just froze for a second. Hopefully the stream was okay. Help that up. Help that down here. Let's put this over here. I don't need help with this right now. I need help looking at the screen. See? Can, yeah, can we wave to the people? Yeah? Can you say free? Free. Code? Dada. Can you say code? Go. Code. Camp. Yeah. Yay, free code camp. Mama. <laughs> Mama. Mama? Is mom upstairs? Yeah. Yeah? Upstairs. Yeah. I'll come upstairs in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Nikki says, does that navigator call cause problems on the server? Uh, since that's not a browser, so navigator might be undefined there. Um, yeah, I, um, you want to go upstairs? Yeah. Okay, see you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks for helping. Help me. All right, go ahead upstairs. Go see Mama. Oh, you're going to give me my water? Thank you. You're so helpful. Upstairs. You're, yeah, I'm going to stay down here. I'm going to stay down here. Bye. Bye. Rafael, could you help her go upstairs, please? Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, so I thought about that at first, but let's let's check this out. I think it's um, it's already saying like basically if this is in the browser, then let's check this. If not, don't worry about it. So I don't think we'll have a problem with it. All right. Uh, John Hansen says, Nikki's blog has great info on SSH keys for GitHub. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, Nikki's blog is super helpful. Abdul says, hi. Uh, hi to the kid. Um, John said, cutie. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, that's my baby. Uh, yeah, she wants me to be with me all the time and have me hold her. So she uh, frequently tries to sneak down here. Um, during the day when I'm working, uh, so if anybody leaves like the door open to the basement, she just she sneaks down and climbs through. The basement's like partially unfinished, so there's a little spot in the wall where there's actually like a hole that she can get through, and so all the doors are shut to me, but there's still a hole there. So she sneaks through the hole, climbs under my desk and through all my cords, and comes here to sit with me. So I need to I need to fix that hole so she can't get in. But uh 
Okay, so I've gotten through all the questions, and uh, we're already at about an hour for the stream. So I think I'm just going to, I'm not going to do another Pomodoro session. Basically, we, you know, I've either explained or we've worked through the major issues when updating. Uh, now, of course, this depends on what what pieces you've used, right? Any parts of Material UI that I haven't used that you know, if you have used it, there might be other issues that I have no idea about. So this is definitely not a comprehensive, you know, tutorial on upgrading, but uh, hopefully this will just kind of make you aware of some of the issues and some of the ways to get around them. And, um, you know, we even did a little bit, <laughs> some overriding of things here to make it work. Um, but I should be... I'm going to check out a few other things before I commit this, but I should be committing these changes, you know, before I finish for the day. So, uh, pretty soon. I'm, I'm probably going to be finished in about a half hour or so. Um, so, if you if you want to look at the code, it, it will be available in about a, a half hour at, at the latest. Um, all right. So, I think I'll be, I'll be back in the office tomorrow. Uh, so I am a bit busy with meetings, but I think I should be able to get a stream in. So um, I'll, um, I'll announce that stream on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you'll also get a notification if you've signed up, if you subscribe to this channel and uh, enabled notifications. Um, so hopefully I'll see you all tomorrow. And until then, have a great day.